Before I was getting in trouble with Uncle Phil, I was in trouble with Uncle Sam. Me and Jeff had come out with our smash hit, Parents Just Don't Understand, we made a bunch of money, we won a Grammy, album was triple platinum. I had motorcycles and cars. I called the Gucci store in Atlanta, and I was like, hey, will y'all close it down if I bring my friends? And I'm smiling, but that's stupid. We released our next album, and it was like a flop. It was a tragedy, it went like, double plastic. I had spent most of my money, like all of I spent all my money. And I didn't forget, but I didn't pay the IRS. In my mind, I mean, I wasn't like trying to avoid paying taxes. I was just like, oh damn, they need their money. The IRS took all, took all of that stuff. So I was like, broke, broke, broke. Being famous and broke is a shitty combination. Cause you're still famous and people recognize you, but they recognize you while you sitting next to them on the bus. And the stuff they ask you to sign on a bus, you know, like, oh, can you sign my baby? That's a Sharpie. I, I probably shouldn't just write on the baby with that. Oh, you too big to sign my baby. Well, no, nah, I mean, you know, so I signed it. So I was like laying around and my girlfriend was like, Dude, we're not doing this. Like, you're not just gonna be laying around this house all day. You're gonna go do something. And I was like, what? What am I supposed to do? Go where people is is doing it. Wh where are people doing it? Go to the Arsenio Hall show. Just go stand around at the Arsenio Hall show. Yes. That's stupid. Bring it up. So I went to the Arsenio Hall show and I met a dude named Benny Medina. Benny Medina is the real life Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, except he actually went from Watts to Beverly Hills. Same basic concept, way shorter distance. I meet Benny and he pitches me the idea for this show and I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm not an actor. I'm like, cool. And he says, hey, you know, I want you to meet Quincy Jones. Quincy Jones is producing with me. So I find myself at Quincy's and there's actors and artists and celebrities and politicians, it's like everybody's at Quincy's house. It's like the whiz without the costume. So Benny walks me in and introduced me to Quincy. I'm like, hey Q, what's up, man? He said, like, hey man, you know, I saw your music videos. I love, I love what you're doing. I love what you're doing. Tell me your rap name again. They call me the Fresh Prince. All right, good. That's what we're gonna call the show. And he handed me a screenplay for a failed Morris Day pilot. Like, I don't have the time. So I need you to do this. I need you to go ahead, take a few minutes, take 10 minutes, study the script, and I'm gonna I'm clear all the stuff out the living room, and we're gonna have everybody sit down in the living room, we're gonna do an audition. He had movers that could reset his furniture. I was like, this dude is real. So he goes out and tells everybody, come on, come on, come on. And I was like, hey Q, hold up, man, hold up. I'm not ready to do no audition. And he's like, oh, all right, all right. All right. Uh, well, what you need? Tell me what you need. Just set the meeting for a week and I could do it. He said, yeah, yeah, you know, Brandon Tartikoff, the head of NBC, is out there. I'll get him to schedule for next week. And then you know what's gonna happen? Something gonna come up and then he's gonna have to reschedule. Oh, yeah, yeah, so three, so three weeks from now, Q, we can do it three weeks from now. I said, yeah, 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 three weeks from now be good. Or you could take 10 minutes right now and you can change your life forever. I was like, Fuck it then. Yes, give me 10 minutes. I said yes, and I let it rip. And I got to the end and everybody is clapping. Quincy looks at Brandon Tartikoff, the head of NBC. Did you like it? And Brandon said, yeah, yeah, I liked it, Quincy. He says, no, did you like it? And he's like, yeah, I liked it. He's like, good, you're his lawyer. Draw me up something right now. Damn, Quincy ordering other people lawyers around. <laughs> like, that's his lawyer, Quincy, leave that man alone. And Quincy turned to me and he was like, hey, Will, you got a lawyer? Quincy, I'm broke. If I had a lawyer taking 5%, he'd owe me money right now. He was like, all right, and he turned to his assistant. He was like, get Will a lawyer. Quincy had been drinking. You know, it's probably obvious from the story, but he had been tasting. He, he had wet his beak a little bit that night. Yeah, so the lawyers go out in the limo and they're drawing up the first deal for the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Quincy is like popping up at the window. No paralysis, do analysis. No paralysis, do analysis! <laughs> like, how did he make Thriller like this? So we got the lawyers draw up something. Ken Hertz looked it over for me, Brandon Tartikoff, and we took a picture and we signed the, the, the basic deal for the Fresh Prince. And three months later, we were shooting the pilot 
And that's the story of how I became the Prince of Bel-Air. So the moral of the story is always say yes, and I guess listen to your girlfriend. Ha, <laughs> ha,